Hey guys, what's up? Alec back with the Daily Stock Market and we have a huge earnings week ahead for Microsoft, Google, Facebook, and much more. So make sure you stay throughout this entire video because we're going to be going over the first two days, Monday and Tuesday of earnings week. And this is a huge earnings week, so you definitely want to stay on top of it. And then halfway through the week, we're going to do another earnings update for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So make sure you're subscribed with post notifications on so you don't miss any of those future uploads. So just to give you a preview of what's going on with the week on Monday before the open, we have Coca-Cola, Activision, and some other companies. After the close, we have Whirlpool and others. But Tuesday's when it starts picking up because we have UPS, Wastemasters, JetBlue, three millimeters and then after the close we have alphabet which is google microsoft let's not forget visa gm enphase chipotle quantumscape and then moving throughout the week on wednesday we have boeing and spotify t-mobile harley davidson adp after close we have meta facebook paypal ford qualcomm pinterest teledoc so wednesday is going to be a jam-packed day we're going to be going over that in the next video Thursday, we have Twitter, which is a huge anticipated one, Caterpillar, Nokia, Southwest, MasterCard, McDonald's, Domino's, After Close, we have Apple, Amazon, Roku, Intel, Robinhood, okay, which is also going to be all interesting ones. So Thursday, Wednesday, and Tuesday are going to be the big days that you definitely want to be watching out for. Friday, we have ExxonMobil, Chevron, some oil companies and others so the first interesting one we have reporting earnings monday before the open is activision blizzard okay atvi remember this one got bought out by microsoft so any shares that you have are going to be absorbed by microsoft we also saw this one as low as 58 dollars per share at the end of last year so if we can see them closer to that $50, 55 dollars mark, I'll be more inclined to buy them. However, I would probably just be buying Microsoft at this point because they're going to be one in the same in the future anyway. We also see lower expectations in quarter one, 2022. So that could be a good sign. However, we have seen uh, gaming slowing a little bit. If you look at Corsair, they missed earnings and they fell dramatically. So something like that could be on the in the cards for ATVI. On Monday, we also have Coca-Cola, which is a beloved dividend stock. This is a pretty safe stock for long term. They're at an all-time high. So I would be looking for a miss on Coca-Cola. I would look to play defensively on Coca-Cola. And if we can see them under $60 per share, if they fall like 10% or so, then I'll be more inclined to pick up some Coca-Cola shares. I want to see them below 60 and closer to that $55 mark for me to really load up some Coca-Cola shares. And you can also see the dividends of 2.61 dividend. And the expectations are a little bit higher than last year. But if you look at the last four quarters, they have consistently been beating quarter after quarter. Now, Tuesday, we have UPS before the open. And if we look at their price history in the last three months, they're actually down around 20% from highs. Okay, so they're actually a pretty good buy right now. They've been following a pattern. It looks like right at that $180 support. They've also had a recent support right around $200 per share. So if they fall 5% or so down to under 180 and you can sell above $200 per share, that could be an option. But what we're really looking for is UPS to fall to like 2021 lows, which would be like $160, $150 per share to start loading up a little bit heavier on something like a UPS. Okay, they also have a 2.45 dividend, which is really good actually. And you can see the last uh, four quarters, they've consistently beat their earnings and their year over year has dramatically grown. But keep in mind, this is a risky one because it's kind of like a pandemic play. Obviously, everyone was at home. They were shipping more things to other people because they didn't want to go and deliver them themselves. So this could wind down, start winding down in the next one to two years. Something like UPS, FedEx, definitely be a little bit weary of those recovery stocks, those COVID benefited stocks. Okay, so this is when it starts getting juicy. You can see 29 million in rev, um, in volume, okay? And in the last three months, they're at a three-month support, and they're headed towards a one-year low. Right now, they're in a kind of a free-fall mode. They haven't held at the supports of 270, 
275, 280. So they are at risk of going down closer to that 250. And if they go down to closer to 250, I think that'll be a lot more attractive place to start buying. I'm dollar cost averaging in, only have a little bit of a position right now. They almost have a 1% dividend yield, which is very interesting. All right, so here we see a quick article, Microsoft to report Q3 earnings, what's in the card? cards microsoft is set to report on april 26th okay estimate for revenue is pegged at 48 billion implying 17 percent growth from a figure reported in the year ago quarter the consensus mark for earnings have stayed at two dollars and 18 cents per share for the last 30 days suggesting 11 percent growth from the figure reported in the year ago quarter microsoft earnings beat the consensus estimate in all the trailing four quarters the average surprise being 10%. PC shipment declines have hurt the top line. Revenues from Windows are likely to have been driven by steady traction seen in Windows commercial products and cloud growth services growth admin weak PC demand. Per IDC data, 80 million PCs were shipped during the first quarter of 22, down 5% from a year ago, primarily due to the supply chain and geopolitical challenges. Among the PC vendors, Dell, Apple, registered an increase in shipments, however, while Apple had a market share of 8.9%, Dell registered market share of 17%. Moreover, Dell's PC sales improved 6% year over year to 13 million units, while Apple witnessed an increase of 4.3% to 7.2 million units. Microsoft expects Surface revenues to grow for in the mid-teen range driven by strong demand for premium services. So personally, I'm dollar cost averaging into Microsoft for long term. I think it's a great buy at a three month low. However, I'm waiting to buy the big dip under $250 per share because I definitely think it's possible to see Microsoft that low. And keep in mind, Activision Blizzard, the one that we talked about earlier in this video, is gonna be tied to Microsoft closely too. So they could sympathy trade off each other if one of them has a bad earnings, the other one can move down a little bit. Also keep in mind. So we talked about Microsoft. Now it's time to talk about Google, one of the biggest stocks in the world, biggest companies in the world, down 4% on one day, down 15% on one month. Okay, so this could be a buy the dip opportunity. Right now you can kind of see them in free fall mode, kind of how Microsoft is um, right now as well. Looks like they have a bottom here at $2,200 uh, per share. So I have some price alerts set at like $2,250 per share. Looking to buy some at, we see an all time high of around $3,000 per share. Remember they are also going through a split in the next coming months. So that's gonna rally the stock in my opinion. And if I can get in between uh, 2250, 2250 per share. I think that would be a great place. And I also have some price alerts even set around $2,100 per share as well. I don't think it'll go below $2,100 per share. And if it does, I think I'll be loading up for long term, especially with the split incoming. We have a market cap of um, 1.6 trillion, a PE ratio, which is pretty fair for Google, only 21 on the PE ratio. And we can also see that they consistently beat earnings uh, quarter after quarter as well. Look at that EPS, $25 on their EPS. That's such a profitable company and a beautiful company to look at. Visa is the biggest credit card processing company in the world and they're reporting earnings on Tuesday. Okay, now we see them down on the day on Friday down almost 4%. Okay, we can see them at almost a three month low and almost a yearly low too. So if they see them again, closer to $190 per share, um, I think that's a good place to be buying Visa for long term between $175 to $190 per share. I have some price alerts set and loading up a little bit. You can see I've already have $1,200 in uh, Visa. They have a PE ratio of $35 per share, so they're valued a little bit richer than companies like Google. I'm loading up more on Google. I'm dollar cost averaging into Google for long term. Um, and if we go down and scroll and see their quarter over quarter growth, they've consistently been growing quarter over quarter and they haven't missed an earnings yet. So if any of these companies that are growing consistently quarter over quarter, um, end up missing this quarter, for example, that could be a huge red flag 
for investors and could drive the stock down to the price points that I'm looking to buy at. And I do want to do a deep dive on Visa. So make sure you subscribe with post notifications on because a deep dive will be coming later either this week or next week on Visa because I definitely want to touch on them. Now, Enphase Energy is the last stock we're talking about, down 20% in the last month but they're still up 27% in the last three months. If we look at the last year, it's been very choppy for Enphase Energy. We see them as low as $115, $120 per share, which I have price alerts set right at $120 per share and $115 per share and $125 per share because I like um, Enphase as a clean renewable energy stock. Okay, we even see a high of $267 per share on Enphase Energy, and we see them consistently beat their earnings quarter after quarter, and they're ended up beating it by a lot also. It's not like little beats. And if we look at what the analysts have to say about Enphase, they have a 45% upward of movement in the next 12 months to $223 per share. Some analysts have them as high as $280 per share, and some analysts have them only at $155 per share in the next 12 months. So no analysts have them losing money. Most analysts have them above $200 per share. So if you're looking to hold between 6 and 12 months, um, Enphase could be a good one to load up on, especially if we see them down closer to the $120 per share range. So analysts have them at $223 per share. If you pick them up closer at $120 per share, you can actually see that's about an 83% growth if you pick them up at $120 per share and sell them closer to $220 per share on Enphase Energy. So there's a lot of opportunity with earnings season approaching and I like to play earnings season more defensively, so I look for the stocks that dip big, and I look into the reasons why they dip big, and if they're a good company like Visa, Google, Microsoft, Enphase Energy, there's a good chance that I'm gonna be buying the dip fairly heavy on stocks like that. And we, don't forget, we also have a huge earnings coming Wednesday and Thursday. Facebook, PayPal, Forward, Qualcomm, Apple, Amazon, Intel, Robinhood. So make sure you're subscribed with post notifications on and share this video with a friend if you think that they will find it helpful. Thank you guys for all the love and support that you've been showing on the videos. As long as you keep liking these videos, I'll keep making them for you. Comment below what you guys wanna see next. And I'm actually gonna give $5 Venmos to anyone who watched this far. So comment below, it's actually gonna be the first five people. So if you don't see five comments yet, comment below, screenshot it and send it to me here on Instagram at the Daily Stock Market and I'll send you your $5 on Venmo. If you also wanna join the close friends list, I personally think right now is gonna be an excellent time to be buying stocks for long term. A lot of the stocks are at 2017 lows, 2016 lows. So if you're investing today, right now, there it's basically like you're starting five years ago or three, four years ago in a lot of these cases too. So it could be huge buying opportunities to set up your future. Message me if you need a little bit of help. Beginners are welcomed and I have beginner guides as well. Share this video with a friend if you think they'll find it helpful. I'll see you guys in the next video. Subscribe with post notifications on. And remember, don't time the market, buy the market. Peace.